Hi guys, it's a very pregnant little mama Liv. <laughs> um, it's been a long time since I've done a video actually, but um, I just wanted to catch you up on what's been going on. Um, obviously the title of this video does actually give that away quite easily. <laughs> um, I just wanted to tell a bit of a story about um, what's been going on and how I've got to having a breech baby and what that means for my birth. Um, which is coming very soon. <laughs> I now have less than a week until I'm having my baby. Um, I'm just going to apologise for like the weird sepia tones in this room. Um, I really need to invest in a proper light. <laughs> but yeah, at the moment you've just got beaming sunshine through, which is making the lighting a little bit weird, but we'll deal with it. Um, so yeah, I have a breech baby. Um, it starts all with my um, 34 week midwife appointment. Um, I went in and this was my first face to face midwife appointment since my very first booking appointment that I had um, when I was only eight weeks. So it's been a very long time since I've had a face to face midwife appointment. I had my normal midwife. I had the same midwife I had at eight weeks, which was really nice. Um, and essentially they just get, get you in. It's a really quick appointment um, and they feel around your belly, uh, measure a few things and um, measure your bump. They measure your heart rate, uh, your blood pressure and um, they measure their baby's heart rate as well. Actually, now I'm thinking about it. Did they measure my heart rate? I don't think they did. No, just, just blood pressure and the baby's heart rate. Um, and they kind of ask you questions and check you're okay. But um, that all went really well. It was a really kind of in and out appointment. She had a feel of my belly and um, she said, yeah, definitely, definitely head down. Um, she said that, the, uh, that I had like a lump at the top and she said, yeah, that's, that's the bum. I'm pretty sure that's the bum. And um, then the head is is not engaged but it's in the right place it's it's down but she said that um i was measuring a little big on the scale so um she said she just wanted to send me for a growth scan just to check she said she wasn't worried she just wanted to send me for a growth scan and i wasn't worried either i was i was okay with this and so they booked me in for a scan literally i think it was the next day or the day after which was really wonderful that they can get me in that quickly um because i was yeah obviously with everything going on i think that's really good that they were able to get me in that quickly um they took the scan and the first thing she said when she put the little um monitor thingy on my belly was she's breech and i was like ah oh, okay which hit me because she was she seemed really sure when she was feeling my belly that um she was head down but it is really difficult to tell sometimes i get that um and they said essentially that it's not a worry because you're only at 34 weeks so um and it's when it gets over to 36 or 37 weeks that they need to consider some options but because i was only 34 weeks they were like she could turn it's fine um and then fast forward to my next appointment, which was meant to be my 36 week appointment, but it was actually in my 37th week, um, which is when I was full term, of course. Um, and I didn't feel like the baby had moved at all. So my bump has like a lump at the top and a little lump at the side and that hadn't changed at all. So that was exactly the same feeling I had when she was breech. So I assumed She's not head down. And um, the midwife, different midwife this time, which may have been the problem, I don't know, um, had a feel of my belly. And she said, she's flipped. She's flipped, she's head down. And I was like, really? I was, I was really surprised. And she said, yeah, absolutely. Um, the lump at the top, that's definitely her bum. She, she pushed it and she said, that's behaving not at all like a head. That doesn't feel like a head at all. And then she put her hand lower and said, yeah, the head's there. That's the head. And um, I was saying, are you sure? Because obviously it said in the last scan that she was breech. And she said, yeah, absolutely. She's head down. Um, and she said that she was so certain that she, she wouldn't, didn't want to send me for a scan. She said, essentially, 
if I was in any way uncertain, then I would send you for a growth scan. And I was like, okay, fine, yeah, that's fair enough. And um, I was quite happy because I um, had wanted a natural birth, I was planning for a natural birth, and it was looking like that was going to happen again. So I went home really happy with myself and I was like, yeah, she's, she's turned, she's turned. And um, I spoke to my partner, Julian, and he was like, has she? Because she looks the same. And then I started thinking about it, about how she hasn't moved. The, the, my bump looked exactly the same, if, if not a little bigger, but the position that she was in was the same. I still had that lump at the top and a little lump at the side. And he said, I, th I think she's still breech. And the more I thought about it, the more I doubted what the midwife had told me. And I thought back to the fact that with the last appointment I had, if I hadn't have gone for a growth scan, they would have assumed she was head down as well. Clearly, whatever is going on here feels like a bum at the top and a head at the bottom, but it's not. So it got me really worrying about like getting to the stage of going into labour and assuming that she's head down and she's actually not. And I really, really didn't want that to happen. I want to know everything that's going on. So um, my boyfriend encouraged me to ring up. I was nervous. I didn't want to because I didn't want to pester them. I thought, well, the midwife knows best and all of this. But he said, no, give them a ring, give them a ring. So I called up and I told um, the lady at the end of the phone exactly what my situation was. And she was so nice. She said, no, don't worry, we'll book you for a scan. And that scan was, again, I think the next day, um, which was fantastic because <laughs> at that point I was really worried. Um, and I went in for my scan and she was breached. <laughs> so... I was right, it, which just proves that like following your instincts on these things is so important. She um, hadn't moved at all, as I thought. She was exactly the same. And um, what the scan technician told me was that the big lump at the top was her um, feet and limbs. And the little lump at the side was actually her head. <laughs> so the bit that a lot of people were thinking was a bum was actually her feet. And the bit at the side that I think they thought was like a, a, get a foot or something like that was actually her head, which is really strange. So she's kind of she's kind of sideways. I've got a bit of a lopsided bump um, and it's very top heavy as well. It's very like the top of my bump is a lot bigger. It kind of slopes down um, and it's, it just confirms exactly what I thought. And obviously at that point I was 37 weeks, so it really was important that we did plan ahead for the fact that it didn't look like she was going to turn and actually thinking back she'd been this this position for months actually that that kind of shape in my bump i'd had for at least two months i think looking back at photos of my bump and concerns that i'd had in my head i'd even i found a facebook post i'd posted in june that said i'm really confused about my bump it, it seems strange that i've got a lump here and a lump here and i, don't, I can't really work out what they are and i'm trying to belly map and can't work it out so that kind of shows that she really hasn't moved at all um which makes me think she's not going to budge and she hasn't so far she is still feels exactly the same if anything she's just getting bigger and more squashed in um so once my scan was done, um, they sent me upstairs to the fetal health unit, which I didn't expect. I thought they would send me home and maybe give me a phone call or something. But they said, no, go straight up to the fetal health unit and um, they'll speak to you there. And I waited there for not very long, which was nice because it was this was when it was like ridiculously hot. It was when we had the heat wave and oh, my God, it was so hot and I had my mask on and Oh, it was awful, but <laughs> I didn't have to wait for too long. And then um, a midwife and a doctor spoke to me and talked about my options. And essentially my options were um, an ECV, which is where they manually manipulate um, the baby in my belly from the outside. So it's, um, it's as if they're like, they're pushing on her. I, I looked at a video of it beforehand 
I already knew my options, um, but it was nice to hear them talk about them as well and talk about it with a professional. But um, so they kind of try and lift her out of, lift her bum out of my pelvis to um, try and make her move. But um, I, I knew about this procedure and I'd spoken to a few people about it. And especially with my um, ME, um, I've done a video about um, ME, it's a health condition I have. Um, I didn't think that this was a good idea. It seemed very invasive. 50% um, of the time it doesn't work. Um, it looked very painful. And of course, I knew that Julian wouldn't be allowed to be there with me at all. He wouldn't even be allowed in the hospital for the procedure at all. Because in the video I was watching, this um, lady who was getting it done, she was holding her partner's hand and she was squeezing it so tight you could tell in her face she was in really a lot of pain. And I wouldn't even have that. I wouldn't be able to hold his hand or anything. And it just, it just wasn't something I wanted to do. And I very much felt like my baby is where she is and we shouldn't mess with that she's clearly in that position and i i don't think it's it didn't feel right to shunt her out of that position and also it it just seemed a bit too much for me with the fact that i was going to have to go into labor anyway it was just an added bit of stress and uncomfortableness that i really didn't want to have to take on so i said no to the ecb which the doctor was absolutely lovely about. And she said, no, I'm really glad you've thought about it. You've done your research. Um, so the only other option really is a C-section. And so um, she talked me through what the risks of a C-section are um, and the risks of going through with a natural birth as well. Um, breach natural birth is not recommended and it's something that I don't want to do especially in the position that she's in, she's very difficult. And um, so they booked me in for an elective C-section, which is crazy because I actually know the date that my baby's going to be born. I think obviously things can happen, um, but I actually have a booked in date um, and I've got my pre-op booked in and my very, very last midwife appointment is tomorrow which i'm really excited about i mean i know that sounds weird to say i'm excited about a midwife appointment but it's just like it's it's, it's a kind of momentous occasion it's my last appointment with her and the next time i see the midwife i'll have a baby and um yeah it, it's a very strange feeling but i'm really happy with it now um i've really made peace with the fact that she's breech um i it's, it is what it is. It's, it's very uncomfortable, is one thing I would say about having a breech baby, is that obviously I've not had a non-breech baby, so I can't compare, but um, the pain in my ribs is almost constant at the moment because she is so far up. Her, her head and her feet are like stuck up into my ribs. So I've not been getting much sleep, um, which is really difficult because I know that I'm not going to get much sleep when she's here either. I've been trying to nap as much as possible um, but other than that I'm really happy with the decision that I've made to have an elective c-section and um, I've had to slightly repack my hospital bag my plans have slightly changed um, but yeah it's it's really strange knowing that having a date planned but obviously I could go into labour beforehand. Nobody's told her that she has a planned C-section booked in. She no, she doesn't know that. So like, obviously, she could come at any time. Um, I think what would happen then is I'd probably still end up having a C-section, but obviously it would be a little more, a little more rushed. I'd have to go into the hospital. I'd probably be having contractions, obviously. Um, so it'd be a little different, um, or probably a little less calm. Um, so I'm hoping that that's not going to happen. I'm really, really, I was in my video about the raspberry leaf tea. I have now stopped drinking raspberry leaf tea. I was chugging down the tea and now I'm like, no, nothing that could induce labour. I want her to stay put, which I know is not what most mums experience in pregnancy. Most mums really want to hurry it along when they get into their third trimester, especially when they get to full term past 37 weeks. And, um, but yeah, no, I'm trying to make sure she 
she really stays put there and I've had a few aches and pains and things and every time I do I'm like oh no oh no oh no she's coming and then it passes and it's fine but yeah just fingers crossed she stays put and everything goes to plan and I have my c-section and I get to meet my baby next week which is just absolutely mad but yeah that's what's been going on with me um sorry I've been quite absent as you can tell there's been a lot that's been going on um and I'm hoping to film another video um, soon about my hospital bag and what I've packed in that, so look out for that one. And then that will definitely be my last video before I have a baby. So that's really exciting. And um, maybe I'll, my next video, I'll show you her as well. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening. Um, and if you like this video, hit like. If you want to hear more, if you want to have more updates, um, see what happens with my C-section, whether she comes early, because um, I'm hoping to film like a birth story, um, then definitely hit subscribe. And yeah, it's been really great documenting this journey and um, sharing it all with you. So yeah, see you on the other side. Bye.